think shortly. Okay, so we've got into position, we've got signal, and here it is. They are very fortunate in that. This is quite a shallow stretch of the river, so they've cleverly chosen this area. It's going to be tricky for any crocodiles to get them as they skip across this shallow stretch of the Mara River. Getting a drink along the way. A lot of them. Absolutely awesome. I'm going to ask Senza to just zoom out to give you an idea of how many are queuing up. Look at that. Look at all of them up there. They've got quite a steep slope to traverse down. Sadly, we are going to battle to get into a good position to show you them negotiating the steep cliff. And it's not uncommon for them to get a little bit of a fright like we're seeing now and head back up, wait for the pressure to build again before they pluck up the courage to cross. And I wonder how long it's been going on for. It was difficult to see, to see from here. Actually, we can see from here. Senzo, why don't we film across to the right and let's show them already who's crossed. Look through there. Look at that mass of wildebeest. These have all already crossed. And imagine how many more are on the other side of that ridge. Absolutely incredible. And this is definitely one of Mother Nature's biggest bounties or movements of animals. And we are so lucky to be witnessing it. Oh, there's a hut that's popped up onto the scene now. I'm just going to... Awesome. Nice work, Senzo. Let's see what this hyena is going to do here. I'm not sure if you guys can hear all the commotion of the wildebeest. Oh, they got a big fright as they saw that hyena. They weren't sure obviously what it was initially. And they're such opportunistic animals. It knows that possibly some wildebeest or zebra could break a leg while they're crossing. So it's just waiting here, looking for any options. And I'm told that this hyena is from the Paradise Valley Clan. So that's some interesting info, and certainly looking forward to getting to know the hyenas and all the different animals and clans and prides within this area. Seems to be a second surge crossing the river now. Hello to Kylie, you're interested to know if they ever trample one another when they're crossing, and yes, they certainly do. It must be said that this is a very mild crossing. You get some where they're literally throwing themselves off 10, 15, 20 feet banks, landing on one another, injuring themselves. I mean, I guess it could be a likened to a state of mass mayhem, even within humans. We've heard of terrible stories of humans being stampeded when exiting stadiums or concerts. And I guess this is a fairly similar affair. I cannot believe we're sitting here live in the Masai Mara watching one of these great river crossings. wondering where all the crocodiles are because there don't seem to be any in this little area and you may find over years and years of experience the crocodiles gather in the most dangerous of crossing points because that's where they'll most likely be able to get the easy meals whereas a crossing point like this as I've said it's quite an easy one for the wildebeest and zebra to negotiate Liz, you've asked a question about these wildebeest and their patterns and their
pathways that they move, and you've heard that they will never travel on the same pathway twice. Um, I guess that could be the case, but it's probably through default or anything else that they don't have an exactly planned route, and then through default they could travel along similar routes over different years. But that is an interesting question you ask, and I'm going to have to do a little bit more research. I know that they would have done plenty of research coloring these animals to get in insights into their pathways that they move. But I think, yes, it would be unlikely that they would take the exact same path every time. But like I said, through default, maybe they do. Isn't it interesting how some turn back once negotiating that steep bank? Just not convinced that it's safe to cross. Hello to P. Hart. You're interested to know whether I think it would be safer for these animals to cross the river early on in the migration or later on. And it's, I think it all comes down to the, you know, the individual crossing point that they arrive at. Um, like I said, this is quite a safe crossing point, so I don't think it matters whether they arrive late in the season. There's probably less hunger from the crocodiles and some of the danger, the dangerous points later on in the season, so I would guess that it's possibly a little bit safer later on when a lot of the predators are already gorged. You'll find this river will be so full of carcasses that some areas actually get clogged up with them. A lot of the wildebeest and zebra drown in certain sections and they don't even get killed by crocodiles. So there's a surplus of uh, carcasses for the crocodiles to feed on once a few crossings have taken place. Now what I'm thinking of doing, rather than spending too much time here, as wonderful as it is, is I think it may be worth our while investigating a few different crossing points and trying to work out where the most action is at. As you can see there's still hundreds if not thousands of wildebeest queuing here and it'll be the same at many of the crossing points. Look at that. Look at them all coming down the hill. They look like ants streaming down the hill from as far as the eye can see. Absolutely awesome. Isn't that a fascinating sight? It's also good for me to try and work out where all the different crossing points are now. This is virgin territory for me, so it'll be best for us to try and use this time to work out where the best spots to be are, where all the roads are to get into position quick enough if we do get a report of crossings happening along the river. So you'll have to bear with me if you don't mind that this is a bit of a learning curve for all of us, because I do not know my way around this area very well. Good stuff. Well, I think this is a good opportunity to send you back to Jamie.